You want to go to pin go. first? Oh, yes. We want to go to view. And we're already recording. <laughs> so we're gonna... Okay. Yeah. Good morning. It's... Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Nice to have you here. It's the first Sunday of the new year. And um, our topic this morning is hope an illusion or possibility and and um, so i'm going to begin with a reading by our founder ernest holmes uh, that is in his 365 a thought for each day it's a great little book if you don't have one and it's called i enter into the gladness of living and he starts with a quote from luke 6 38 give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and running over shall men give into your bosom and i'll interpret that that bible quote later but ernest says who would not like to be a child again who would not like who, who would not again have the simple faith and childlike trust that somehow or other we seem to lose on the pathway of human experience Things crowd in on us until we lose some of the greatest of all gifts, the simple, spontaneous joy of living and a trust in the power of good, which alone is able, ready, and willing to meet all our needs. Let us then again return to the place of assurance that comes with the simplicity of faith. And say with me as I say this in the first person, I, I now release the multitude of doubts and fears that crowd into my mind, and I become quiet so that the divine miracle may take place in my life. I let every good I possess become multiplied as divine love acts upon my faith to bring into my experience everything necessary to my well-being. I know that the divine good includes all things that are necessary, food, shelter, love, and friendship and the accomplishment of every right purpose. And so my faith, the faith of a little child in me, rises with expectancy to meet this new day in joy and to accept the bounty of heaven. With the faith of a little child, I place my human hand in the invisible hand of the all-sustaining good, and I let the miracle of life and love take place. I break my bread with thanks and distribute such good as I have to everyone I meet. Beautiful. And so it is. Beautiful. <clears throat> so that's a great way for us to start this new year, although we were reminded in our chatting, um, Guru Nam shared that she greets people with Happy New Now, <laughs> because it is this artificial ending that we give of the year, and it's really a continuation of the ever-present now. And while it's true, we do love to end things and start anew. So we are starting a new year and we want to do that thoughtfully and uh, consciously and in a way that will manifest the greatest joy and abundance in our life. I, I do want to spend a little time interpreting that uh, the Bible quote. It's, it's really not an interpretation. It's more an explanation of how things were during that time. Uh, you know, during, during the biblical times, everybody who grew grain gave 10% of that grain to the temple. That was their tithe, a tenth of their, their grain. And that gave them enough seed for the crops for the next year and also for people in need, widows and the poor. Uh, and everybody, in fact, could come to the temple and, and they would hold out their robes, actually. They would hold their robes out and they, the, the grain would be poured into the, the robe and that's how they would take it home. So when it, when it says, good measure pressed down and running over shall men give into your bosom, that's, that's what they're talking about. You'll have enough food, grain that it'll be flowing over and pressed into your bosom means you know the bosom of your robe. So, but the part we remember most of all is that given it shall be given unto you. And that is the law of circulation. In fact, it, it does work. One of our, our members, uh, Sandra, I'll go ahead and mention her, said years ago she was given a challenge to, uh, to start learning this law of circulation. 
that any time she was invited to give, she was to give. And um, she told me at the time, this was many years ago, but she said, I just had to get rolls of quarters. I never gave out so many quarters for every kid selling candy bars or this, that, or the other that, that came to my door. And, um, but that, and she said it was quite an experience to not, not be able to say no and to give every time she was asked to give. And that she was amazed, she kept track at the, at, for the year, what came in and what went out. She was amazed at the end of the year how she was in better shape and that money was flowing more easily to her. Uh, some of it from the sources that it always had come from, but in, a, in a, an easier way. So it was quite a lesson of learning for her about the importance of the law of circulation. And so today we're talking about hope because as a new year, hope is something I think that's all, on all of our minds. You know, hope, it's an interesting concept to hope. I think for a lot of people, well, at first I want to go back to an interpretation that I heard a long time ago of hope. Werner Earhart said, hope is what you have when you don't have a plan, which really put the brakes on hope as something you want to develop or cultivate. And I thought a lot about that and I thought, well, that's true, but so much of our good is unplanned. That is so much of our good that's going, that's going to come to us is not something we thought about or have considered. Uh, we have no way of knowing what it's going to be like. So I, I, I've given a lot of thought to that. And the first thing I wanna say about hope is that the, the language that we use when we speak, these are all symbols. And so the word hope is a symbol and it's, it's a symbol that opens the door, if you will, to the possibility of more. When we use the word hope, we're opening up an energetic space for all that could happen for us that is unimaginable in the conscious daily thinking to unfold and reveal itself and be demonstrated. So I had to go back and rethink this notion of hope as uh, an idle thing. And, and you have people all the time will say, well, I sure hope it works out. And when they say they hope it works out, you think, yeah, well, that's a, that's a nice way to end a conversation or to end a sentence with an optimistic, yes, I hope it works out, but, but is there any substance to that? And what I've had to think about this last week is that hope has the substance of, of opening the space for everything that could be allowed. And I think that's a really, really important thing. So when we say I'm hopeful, what we're saying is I'm opening the door to the possibility of a universe unfolding within and around and for me because this universe is for me and I need to say that. So the words that we use have no power in and of themselves, but the words that we use are symbols that open up the, gen the, the space around us, if you will, the DNA of creation to us. Right. Yeah. Years ago, I learned that hope uh, could be negative. It could be negative if you're thinking, well, I hope that happens or I hope that comes. But but what's the second part that's unsaid, but I really don't expect it to. And in that sense, it is negative. Mm -hmm. You're actually you're putting out the desire and then putting a kibosh on it at the same time. So but but hope itself is quite positive. I think it is. It is opening the door for all possibility. And then what you need to add to that next is the conviction that good is coming because you are a creator. Every thought, every strong emotion you have, every image in your mind is the first step of creation. And as you continue along that line with positive expectation, you are creating the things you hope for. It reminds me of a, of a first date. <clears throat> in this first date, what do you hope for? Uh, while I, in my mind, I feel the connection, I feel the con I feel the love and kindness, I feel the atmosphere, I feel, I feel all kinds of wonderful things about the possibility of this date being the date that will be the greatest date of ever. You don't say, well, I hope it goes well, and in and, and the mental picture of it all, see things going badly. Are, you, are you still dating? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my mind, yeah. 
<laughs> Annette, Annette Funicello. Yeah, st still my girl. Annette, yeah, still yeah, right. Still my girl. She was a Musketeer. I was a Musketeer. We were. We had it. We. we it worked out. But I. What, what I'm suggesting though is that the the energetic space that you occupy as you get ready for that date, and it probably would in this case be with my wife, who I love dearly. <laughs> As I get ready for that date in my mind, I'm preparing the space to move into. And what, so what I would suggest when, when Judith was saying, uh, talking about hope, I was thinking, you know, what you need to do is check in with what is the atmosphere around you when you say hope? What is the, the energetic atmosphere like? Is it positive? Is it caring? Is it compassionate? Or is it, is it really a hopeless plea? You know, for a lot of people, when I hear them say, I hope it's going to happen, you can hear the sadness and disappointment in their voice. Mm -hmm. And so if you say, I hope this will work, then what is the space that you're occupying in that hopefulness? What is the space you're creating? And as Ernest Holmes talks a lot about, it has to be congruent. You have to see it, say it, feel it, know it, have it be so for you, for you to be able to access this universe of possibility. Right, you know, the, in Hebrews, in the Bible, uh, the, the quote about faith is that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And that, that quote mm -hmm. always had me wondering about words. What does that mean, substance of things hoped for? Evidence of things not seen, I could understand because, you know, what you, what you step out in faith for, it, there is no evidence for it yet. But the substance of things hoped for, I, I, I change it in my mind so, so that I better understand it to essence, it's, because substance is the essence of something. But so faith is the essence of things hoped for. You have faith that good things will unfold. And um, that's really a very powerful statement because faith is necessary for hope. You have to have faith in something good. This, this first month of the year, we often summarize our teaching by Ernest Holmes with the, the first uh, four chapters of the Science of Mind textbook. And the first chapter is the thing itself. And what that is about is a redefinition of, of God or it was a redefinition in 1925 when he wrote the book. And it was a redefinition for me in the 1970s when I, when I found uh, the Science of Mind Center in Fort Lauderdale and heard a whole different concept about God than I had heard any other church I attended. And I had become actually agnostic. I didn't believe in anything and quit going to church. I just gave up. Because every time I go, I would get angry. <laughs> Something that they would say about God did, did this or does that. I, I just thought that's not true. And I wouldn't go back. But when I was there, I, I heard nothing but positive things about God. And then I heard about God was being talked about as a creative energy, not a being, not a man, not a, not a person like Santa Claus that punishes and rewards. I thought, oh, now that's an idea that that resonates with me. I you know, most of us, when we come in, we think, oh, I've always believed this, but I never never heard it said before, heard anybody else voice it. So the redefinition is that, that God is a power for good in the universe that is greater than you are, and you can use it. In fact, you are using it all the time. You're using it with every thought, every feeling, every expectation uh, for good or for bad. You know, if you anticipate the worst happening uh, don't be surprised when it does you know? we I, can use it we, we use it to reward and punish ourselves i think of god as the dna of creation <clears throat> and as the dna of creation it's in you it's in me it's in all of us it's in all of us equally and we access that in every thought motion every thought and activity we access it all of the time and so if if god is the dna of who we are we're all connected. We're all connected in a profound way, but we all have access to this very thing that Judith is talking about. And that's an important distinction. So if God isn't the DNA, if God is just an idea that we have that makes us feel good, then it doesn't have any power at all. But if God is the DNA of our creation process, the DNA of everything, it's unseen, it's unseeable, but it's, it's known. 
and it's a constant and it's there all the time. So uh, that the next thing I learned, I think, was the power of our thoughts. And, and I'm, I'm including the emotions that go with those thoughts. Those mm -hmm. are very, you know, our, our thoughts are an electrical impulse. They're measurable with an EEG, electroencephalogram. Well, so it's a movement of electrons. If it's a movement of electrons, it's a thing, a physical thing. And uh, they, they are creating something. So we have to be aware of our thoughts. Before that, I always thought that Nobody has control of what they're thinking and feeling. Feelings were a huge mystery to me. I had no idea what caused them. And, and, and what I learned is that the, your feelings are a direct result of what you're thinking. And if you want to change your feelings, you change your thinking. And then another thing I heard that was very surprising to me was a statement that human beings are far too lenient with their minds. They're far too lenient with their thoughts. They let them go helter skelter all over the place as if they were no things. And they are some things. They are very powerful. So we actually need to guard our thinking. And if it starts to go down some negative path, because we, we, we do it as children and we learn to continue doing it, we imagine the worst case scenarios so that we can sort of uh, fortify ourselves with possibilities for solutions. But that allowing the mind to go to worst case scenarios, you know, we're living in a terrifying, I've learned to guard against and don't do that. Yeah, you know, we're living in a terrifying world that never happened. Right. <clears throat> so Unfortunately. That... <laughs> I, want, I want to speak to that, that, that the emotional and thinking process and in, in relationship to each other. In many ways, I think it's like a movie. You have the thinking script. And if you read the script and you listen to the script, it, it evokes all kinds of other thoughts. But in a good movie, you'll also have a soundtrack. And the soundtrack is the emotional information that goes with the script. And that emotional information ties together with the intellectual information in such a way that it allows you to expand your experience beyond the script and beyond the music. And so as we entertain an idea, uh, and as we allow ourselves to feel into that and to experience the emotion that goes with that, and, and those two are in harmony with one another, there's a bigger world that's available to us. And that bigger world is, and, and I think about a movie that you've seen where there's a wonderful scene and there's a wonderful bit of music in the background. And that music opens up all of your experiences related to that experience at an emotional level. And, and for you to have a cathartic experience is for you to both think it and feel it and know it and have it be who you are at that moment, which is what we're talking about. So hope, hope wouldn't just be the, the soundtrack and hope wouldn't just be the dialogue. Hope would be the depth that you can move into when you allow those two to come together in a very real way. So in that way, hope is also expectation. Yes, right? yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm struck with, uh, and of course I, I watch a lot of movies and, but I'm struck with the, the relationship between that and, and real life. And you know, what, what movie makers have done is they've actually taken apart the conversation we're having and they realize the components, the necessary components. There has to be, uh, there has to be the content of the intellect and the content of the emotionality have to in some way tie together. And when they do, it just opens everything up. It opens us up. To possibility. Yeah. To possibility. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. So when you when you really get that <clears throat> you're not alone, you're not helpless and hopeless, but that there is a power for good in the universe that's greater than you are, and yet you are a part of it, and you can use it, that is hopeful, that is inspiring. So I, I invite you all to, to think of things, oh, you know, this is a time for New Year's resolutions, and a lot of people think of those negatively because that they're often overly uh, challenging and, and uh, then within a month or so they're dropped. Uh, so I really, I like the 
concept of, of smaller steps towards what you want. But, but they, are, they are steps for goals, for expectations, with the, with the knowledge that you are not alone, that there is a power for good that you can be using. Um, and, your, and your thoughts and your expectations are creating it. So I hope you have thought about what you would like to see different this year. We have lots of positive expectations that things are going to get better than what we've experienced in 2020. And that that is exciting and, and hopeful. And I think for those of you that are optimistic and feeling very positive and energetic, you can you can bathe in the symphony of possibility. You can bathe and walk and dance and, and have your being in, in, in knowing what's going to unfold for you. On the bad days, on the difficult days, what I would suggest is something a little different. And that is ask yourself, what is the least I can do in favor of the thing I'd like to see happen? Mm -hmm. What is the smallest step I can take? And let me just take that one small step. Because as long as we are having in mind a place we want to go and we're willing to have some part of us head in that direction, then everything in that direction becomes more visible to us and becomes more possible for us and our life becomes more possible for us the way we'd like for it to be. And allow yourself things that bring you joy. Because if, if you don't, if, you, if, you're, if your resolutions and your goals are are all about discipline and I'm going to do this better and that better. And, and if, if they're about um, denying self pleasure, they won't last very long. You're supposed to enjoy life. You're supposed to enjoy your life. So include things that bring you pleasure. Uh, this, this, uh, this year has been really interesting for looking at that because we got our pleasure, so much of our pleasure from meeting with others, our friends, our loved ones, um, social gatherings. I think sometimes we didn't even know how important those were to us until we couldn't do them. And so we have to, we have to find other avenues of, of pleasuring and, and fun and enjoyment. And I think we have found lots of those this year. They, this is one of them. This ability to meet face to face on Zoom has been a godsend, literally a technological godsend that we still get to see and speak to our friends and our loved ones. And yet I know we're all really anticipating more face to face connectivity. So allow those other, whatever it is that brings you joy, a reading, dancing, singing, uh, talking with, with friends and loved ones. You know, don't, don't start out the year saying, well, I'm going to be totally disciplined and I'm never going to eat the things that I love or drink the things that I drink ever again. It won't last because there is a need for joy. There's a need for joy in life and, and work that in with your plan. Yeah, definitely. So we wanted to say something about how we continue here. Oh, yes, yes, we, we invite your support and your participation in our Center for Spiritual Living. That's what the CSL stands for, the Center for Spiritual Living of the Palm <laughs> Beaches, which will not stay on the screen. I think it has, to, there you go. There, it has to be up against the substance of thing. And I guess I have substance most of the time. Right? <laughs> the substance of thing that <laughs> opened for. <laughs> so on that site, we, we have a lot of our talks on there. And a lot of the classes that we're teaching and have taught, and also there's a button for ways to donate, and um, the, the the most common way goes right through PayPal to our uh, center's checking account. There's also a button for, or a, a way to look into an a, an easy way of giving called Easy Tithe, and you don't have to tithe, you don't have to tenth your income. But it's a way to easily, with your cell phone, give a donation uh, that also goes right into the center's checking account. Uh, because we do have expenses, whether we're meeting in a, in a center or not, uh, as a not-for-profit corporation. And so uh, we thank you for your support. And I also want to say that for those of you that are joining us that don't know us very well and would love to be able to talk to us or connect with us, you can do that through our website. 
uh, you'll certainly find both of us on Facebook and you're welcome to mm -hmm. message us and comment to us and talk to us. We are in favor of a rich and wonderful relationship with you. We are in favor of lots of love and kindness and lots of healing. And so whatever that looks like and is possible, uh, we'd like to invite you to be a partner with us in that. So let's not just have it be a meeting on Sunday. Let's have us meet. Right. We, we also are, <clears throat> are available for spiritual mind treatment. Yes. For those who requested the phone number and the address given for the center is actually our home. Uh, it's my cell phone and our home, uh, home address. So you're welcome to contact us anytime. And we'll be glad to do treatment for you. Well, actually, any time up until probably maybe 11.30. <laughs> I, said we, I was going to say, we generally sleep from 10 to 6. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although for you, we'll be up all night. Yeah, so. <laughs> actually, most of us put our, our phones on, on, on hold until morning. So, But no, feel, feel free to connect with us because this is you, you're our family. And as a family member uh, that we've invited and want to have in our lives, uh, we, we invite you to, to stay connected. I also believe energetically that when we have our best interest for each other in heart and mind, we become a larger force in the universe for good than would exist as, as solos. You know, in essence, what, what we have formed an orchestra and this orchestra can play many things that a single person couldn't play. Indeed. So why don't we end with an, a closing treatment? Let's do that. Yeah, we call it a, a treatment and we'll do this together. So as we come together, this, this wonderful symphony that we have created, every single instrument in the symphony is a very special and wonderful instrument. Every instrument has a song that it can play in a way that it can sound and a, a way that it makes sound that is unlike any other. But when joined together, something happens that is beyond words and beyond description and beyond understanding. So we now know that we are each a part of that symphony, that each of us plays an instrument in the symphony of love and light and joy and possibility. And knowing that we play together means that all of us together are having the life that we want unfold divinely, perfectly, beautifully, magnificently, and wonderfully. We give thanks for the support of the friendship and the connection with with each other we know that together we are creating a new a new world a new world and we give thanks for that so we release and together we say and so it and is so it is thank you thank you for being here today <laughs>